Moin, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with my favorite books of the month of February. And when you watch this, the March wrap up will already be online because I'm behind as always. But I filmed the March wrap up in time. So yay for me. And now to the books I've read in February of 2020, which were 15. And as always, I'm going to tell you about the ones that I think are worth mentioning. Also, as I'm filming this in April 2020 and we're still in the corona shutdown, I feel like I have corona eyebrows. I think like they're very uneven. So if you think they, are, they probably are uneven, I try to pluck them a bit, you know, but I'm not very good at it. And usually like if I would let them grow completely out, Like, Frida Kahlo has nothing on me. Believe me, my mother is Greek. I have, like, the bushiest eyebrows ever. So I hope they still look okay. But if they don't look, they are corona eyebrows. Speaking about the corona shutdown and maybe feeling a little depressed, and I know you should not use the word depressed by just meaning feeling a bit down because of the corona although i think that many people might actually get depressed now that haven't been depressed before in their life um, but susan Kalman, cheer up love which is an autobiographical book about her depression which is all you need to know about this book and she's funny i know her from qi you know the quite interesting show that stephen fry used to moderate on the BBC. She's funny. The book is good. I gave it three out of five stars. Then I've listened to Agency by William Gibson, which is the continuance of The Peripheral, which I've also read or listened to and liked a lot. And it's about people in a dystopian future who help to develop an AI that helps Hillary Clinton to win the election and therefore hopefully prevent some of the disasters that lead to the future being so very broken because of this president, you know, whom we really hope won't get re-elected. But I'm... Uh, let's see. However, I gave this three out of five stars. Then I've listened to Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. I just messed the name up, so I have to say it very slowly. Candice Carty Williams, which I liked a lot. And I'm just, just go ahead and read it, listen to it, whatever you like. I gave it four out of five stars and it was very, very funny. I just filmed my March wrap up, which I'm just randomly going to link in the corner because I like linking things in the corner. And as mentioned in the March wrap up and in the January wrap up, and I don't know where, I'm looking for good mid-grade novels for the niece. So if you have recommendations, please leave a comment. Honestly, leave a comment. And that's why I read The Goat by Anne Fleming. And it's about this girl who comes to New York and tries to find some friends and there's a goat on the roof, which helps her to find friends. And it, it's a nice, it's a nice story. I gave it three out of five stars. Next, I listened to This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. And I don't give out five stars too much. By the way, if you want to know how I rate my books, I'm also going to link that video in the corner. But this is a definite five star read. Listen, it's about this trans kid. And even though it has the most supportive parents ever, which isn't the most realistic part about this novel, but it's beside the points, it describes how very, very difficult it is and it's 
a lot, a lot about love and how you can support your kids. And yeah, there's nothing more to say. Five out of five stars. Just go widen your horizon and read all this and too. This is how it always is. Then I've listened to another mid-grade book, which is Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Holly Goldberg Sloan and Meg Wallitzer. And it's about these two girls whose dads fall in love with each other and they want the girls to meet and they don't like the thought of their dads being together and having to change their lives and getting a sister and um, how the story unfolds. And it's like completely told via emails that are sent, being sent between the girls, between the parents, between the grandma. And it's a very, very nice story. It also has a very hilarious grandmother, which is always a nice feature in a story. And I liked it a lot. I gave it four out of five stars. And lastly, I've listened to Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which lasts like on Instagram, also very hyped and as a very hilarious book. And I didn't even find it that funny. I mean, it was funny in parts, but yeah, it's like not the strongest feature I would give to this book because it's also about love and acceptance. And the hilarious part is that there are these children who go up in flames and how everybody has to deal with that. And I gave it three out of five stars. Those are the books I've read and listened to in February. And all there's left to say is do not forget, especially now, to support your independent local book dealer. Moin, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with Laura Seth. Hi. So we are here to talk about a book I love very, very much. It's called... Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brun. 